<clears throat> okay, so for this activity, um, and we have a couple of computers here if you guys need to grab a computer. So, so uh, fire up, your, um, fire up your, your laptop, your computer, and open Excel or Google Sheets, whatever. And we're just gonna go through a very brief example. Again, this should be super straightforward, but just to make sure we're on the same page about this. So fire it up and open up your, uh, whatever, a, a, a tab, a sheet, and just make up this, this, just type these data in. So make two columns that starts with 23, 45, 5, 34, down to 12. And then this other one that's four. So the stuff in the gray here, type those into your to Excel cells just like that, or your spreadsheet cells. And I'll wait a minute while you guys do that. So I'll read them off if you guys are having a hard time. Sample A is 23, 45, 5, 34, 2, 34, 6, 12, 12, 12. Sample B is 4, 55, 21, 21, 3, 7, 8, 13, 20, and 15. Cool? Everybody good? Maybe we need more time to type that in? Okay, so here we go. So um, this is something that you know, we'll be doing throughout the semester, or maybe in your other classes or whatever, right? So hey, I, um, and so, so this right here, let's, I mean, you don't need to label it, but let me just, for completing this, right? So this is our first measurement Right, so maybe our sample one or replicate one, sample two, three, replicate, et cetera, da, 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 right? Does that make sense? So maybe this is group one collected this data, maybe group two collected this data, group three, you know, that kind of stuff, right? Or, or what have you. I mean, we might organize it different ways. Okay, so here we go. So we have thing one, thing two, we'll call it uh, grassland one, grassland two, or plot A, plot B, whatever you want to call it. And just like before, right, we want to know, hey, is our, our plot A and B different? Our plot A and B the same? What have you, right? So we have some, some community here. We have a population, and we're, this is a sample of the overall population. Maybe this is height. Let's call this height, right? But it could be species richness. It could be anything, right? Okay. So then the first thing you want to do is do a measure of central tendency. So I'm going to use the functions here, the the, these worksheets are primarily made for doing accounting, for putting numbers together, calculating percentages, doing, doing that kind of stuff, right? We've, we've taken to using these spreadsheets for all kinds of stuff, but really they're, they're best strength. They're, they're, where, where they really do great is in this organizing data and trying to do basic manipulation of that data. So we're gonna do that. So right now, have a look. When I click right here on this cell, um, this 12 cell, if you look up here on this bar, it says 12. So it's telling me that in that cell is the number one, two, is the number 12. Okay. And if I move it, that's also 12, that one's six, etc. But I want to do something to Excel, and I want to say, yo, do some math for me. So I use the equation, or the, excuse me, the equal sign, and you see this up here, right? So I hit the equal sign to tell it, yo, yo, yo. We're gonna start doing some math, okay? And there's all kinds of fantastic routines already baked into uh, Excel or Google Sheets or any of these uh, tabular spreadsheet uh, programs that you guys can use, numbers on Mac or whatever it is, they all work basically the same way. And I'm gonna say, let me average, and as I start to type this, you see this whole population of stuff shows up down here with all kinds of other tools. There's, there's, there are hundreds and hundreds of different functions you can employ. And you could, you could um, add these up together. You can nest one within another. So you have a huge number of possible things that you can uh, do to the data. Okay, so I'm gonna say average, and then I'm gonna open the parentheses, which is gonna say, hey, dude, average, and I'm gonna tell you where I want you to average, right? And I'm going to click this first cell, right? And notice now it says B2, because that's, that's, that's column B, row two. And I can do a couple different things. The easiest thing is for me to just hold the shift key down. So I'm not, so I've clicked. I'm not pushing any button on my computer right now. I have this cell clicked. 
I'm going to move my cursor down to the bottom of my sample, to, to the, where it says 12 here. I'm going to hold the shift key down while I click that cell. And have a look. Now it's selected this whole range. And here it says B2 colon B11. So that says do this to all, this, all the data from B2 through B11. And then I'm going to close parentheses to tell we're done with math. And I'm going to hit return. And there's my measure of central tendency. So this is my average. Cool? Now, uh, I want to know how many, what was our sample size? How many things did we do? Obviously, you can go there, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and count. That's easy. But if we have a, a diverse sample or a lot of many more samples, that gets hard. So let's just have Excel do that for us. So again, I'm going to type equal sign to say do some math. I'm going to say count, C-O-U-N-T, open parentheses again. And same thing. I'm going to pick the same range. I'm going to click B, hold the shift key down, and, and click the bottom. Close my parentheses, hit return, and now it's counted how many, it's, it's counted what the, uh, how many samples, or how many numbers are in that, that range, okay? Now let's do some measure of variance. The simplest one, as we talked about, is standard deviation. So we're going to come up here, I'm going to click equal sign, S, T, D, E, V for standard deviation, which is the, the equation for the basic standard deviation. Open my parentheses, same thing. Going to click, click B, hold my shift key down, and then go to the bottom of the range, and then close my parentheses and hit return. Now I have my measure of variance, my noise. Cool? Uh, now, but remember we said our default, let's do standard error as our default, OK? Because that's a little bit better. That's going to, now in this case, we have a sample size of 10 and a sample size of 10, so it'll be less important. Um, but, but, but standard deviation also scales with the mean. I didn't say that. But standard deviation will also get a lot bigger if the, if the quantities get a lot bigger. So, that's a, so for both those reasons, we want to standardize, uh, st do a little more standardization of standard deviation. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the standard deviation and divide it by the square root of the, s the population minus 1. So in this case, it's 10. We're going to... 10 minus 1 is 9, square root of 9 is 3. So I could just type that out. But to be, to be more generic, let's do it like this. So I'm going to say equals my standard deviation. Then I say divided by, so I use the slash, which is the Excel code for divided by. Then I'm going to do open parentheses, because I, I want the and everything in the math, and the parentheses, are, it's just like regular math, right? It's, it's, you go in the order. It, it, it does the stuff inside the parentheses before it does the, the outer stuff. So I'm going to say uh, SQRT, which is square root. And I get really fancy but because I'm trying to make it super simple here for you guys. I'm going to say square root, and I, another parentheses, where am I doing the square root? Of the N, this is the sample size, minus 1 n minus 1. Close parentheses, and then close parentheses, and I'm going to hit return. That's my standard error. Why minus 1? Because that's how it works. Because oh. <laughs> this is a standard error of the population size. Cool, everybody with me? So right now, you've all done, you've all calculated stuff to make some basic visualizations of this pop of, of population A or sample A. Everybody with me? So once we have this done, so if we're doing this for a, let's say we all done 20 different samples, and maybe group one only had nine samples on this time, and group two only had seven, right? If I create this like this, and I, and I set it up, I do a little bit of planning, I can just do it once. And I can copy and paste that sucker across. So check it out. Everybody watch me right now. So look up and make sure you're not typing, but look up here. OK, so here's, here's this is my answers, right? This is my central tendency, my mean, my standard deviation, my standard error. I'm going to select this and drag and copy. Hit copy. Wait, don't do it yet. Just watch. Just watch. So I've copied that. Now I'm going to move my cursor to the next area where I want that. And I'm going to hit paste. And now it's right there. 
So let's check it out. Again, don't type anything. Keep looking up here. Look at it. I'm going to click. Look inside here, right? So this is the average of B2 to B11. Yeah? But now when I click on this dude, it's C2 to C11. So as I've shifted one over, Excel knows, and it, it's, it's adjusted my formula. There are some tricks where I can force it to always go to that same one. If I put a dollar sign in front of uh, uh, C, it'll always be C. If I put a dollar sign in two, it'll always stay that, it won't, it won't make it relative to the others. But check it out. So right now, if I came up, and I, this is number two right here, so look right here. So look at my average, 18.5. If I deleted this, it automatically updates, right? So having this default formula is really nice. Now I can get more fancy and do this all in a single, in a single uh, uh, cell, but, but I think it's easier for you guys the first time if you guys aren't used to doing this to sort of see it like this, okay? And so then I'll have gone and done this and I'll do it for my population A and my population B and C and, and then it comes time to graph it. Okay, what I'll do is I'll probably come up here I'll grab my mean, copy. So watch, watch what happens if I, if I paste it over here. Watch what happens right here. Boom. It's like, what the F's going on, right? Because Excel doesn't know what you want to do. And if we look up here, look, what's in here? Average equals H run, right? So it's going up to here and it's clicking up. It's, it's going up to here. And if I click in here, it's going to highlight, it's, it's looking in those blue cells, and it's like there's nobody there. I can't have an average of nothing, so I, I, it gives me an error code. So what I could do, a couple, I could do a couple different things, but I'll just show you one, one thing. I can copy this and go here, but instead of just hitting regular paste, I can do a paste special. So I'll go up here to my, to my, um, and it'll depend on what program you're on as to what menu, but in Excel, I'm gonna go up to my edit. I'm gonna do paste special. And instead of just the paste all, I'm gonna go, yo, 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 just give me the numbers. Just give me the values. I'm gonna tick the box that says just values. And I'll say, okay. And now check it out, 18.5, 16.7, 18.5, it's there, it's there. But when I click on it now, when I click on this 18.5, it's a formula, right? But when I click on this 18.5, it's just a number. And we're all good to go. So the last little bit is, hey, maybe I want to go graph this. And let me also come right here and grab my, well, yeah, that might be confusing. Let me do this first. Okay, so here we go. So this is, this is right. This is A and B. I'm going to copy this. I'm going to go up here, and I'm going to transpose the pasting. So I'm also going to go back up here to edit special, or paste special. And I'm going to leave everything normal, but this box here that says transpose, I'm going to click that. I'm going to go, okay, and check it out. Now, 18.5 is in the right location. 16.7 is in the right location. I can do the same thing with standard error. Now I'm going to do it once. Look, I'm going to do it. Oh, power user. Copy. I'm going to come up here. I'm going to paste special only the values and I'm gonna transpose them. Okay, booyah. Now I'm ready to graph this. Now if I wanted to graph um, uh, uh, the, the size of our, of our population A versus our population B versus population C, right? I can just go down and it's all together and ready to use in whatever my graphing program is, all right? So this would be like the bar and this would be the error bars around that bar. Make sense? Yep, yep, totally. So, so the question is, what does the transpose do? So check it out, here we go. Here's, trans, here's one, two, three, four, five, right? All transpose is gonna do, uh, so that, that's regular paste, and this is transpose paste. Right? It just goes one, two, three, four, five. Just, it, and, and, and it would be the reverse. If I grab the, the horizontal ones, it, it, would, it would switch them to be vertical. Max? Uh, as you go through your calculations, the significance of matter or 
Uh, okay, so, so um, uh, Max's question is, hey, how come some of these are just one zero? How come some of these are one eight point <laughs> one decimal? Some of these are, are one four point decimal decimal, right? So, so that's, that's gonna be how it turns out. And you can control all that. So, so, um, so, so watch this. So right here, this number right here, this actual, watch this. So I've just made the cell shrink and it looks like stuff changed. So it looks like it now says 5.03 and it does say 5.03, but the actual number, when we look in the cell, the actual number is 5.030892, right? So that's what Excel actually has. So I can go up here and I can do some fanciness. So Excel will do it automatically when I size the cell, but I can also go up here and format um, the number and I can change the number of, of decimal places that it's going to show, right? So that, that changed that, but, but the actual data in the cell remains unchanged. So how many, how many significant digits are, are displayed is simply as convenience for you. So Excel still has the, the full, whatever the full value is, it, it still keeps that raw number. Whether it, it looks like it's showing that to you all or not, that, that's going to depend. So that's, a, that's another common one. Yeah, so that's a good one. So sometimes when we're sharing a data sheet, someone will change it or I'll change it. And, and so, so watch this. So watch, let's see, where's an example? Okay, let's watch this one here. So 18.5, See, you guys see this? Here we go, watch what happens to it. 18.5. It, oh, now it's 19. So it can do that. It can, it can, it can round. It can't round after we, get, after we get to integers. So watch what happens now. Oh, it shows a, a pound sign. Again, if I put my cursor on here, look at The data is still here, 18.5. So all, one of the most common things when you, or when, this happens a lot of times when you guys download the data sheet, and you open up, you're like, Dr. Ray, Dr. Ray, there's something wrong with the data sheet. I'm like, what's up? Yeah, it's like, it's all effed up. There's all these pound signs. And it's like, yeah, dude, just, just grab that dude and spread it and it's gonna be good. So, so what's displayed is for your visual convenience. Click on the cell to see what's, what the reality is that's underlying um, the, uh, you know, you know, the visuals, the, the, the what's plotted for your eyeballs. Cool? Okay, so, um, so yeah, so now you guys all should be able to do this type of manipulation that we're talking about, right? So I've, I've been doing this for you so far, right? So the first couple labs, I've gone in and I've, and I've, I've tried to make things go fast, and so I've, I've done the summary. But you guys can do this all now. This is very simple, right? I mean, my, it takes, a, the first time or two may take a little bit, right? But you guys, it's all totally in your um, ballpark. You guys can all do this very uh, again, you can get more fancy and do this in just one line as opposed to multiple lines. But, but, but regardless, this is very common. Using these mathematical functions, using these copy and paste values, transpose, very, very simple. This isn't, this isn't high art or Hogwarts or anything. It's just basic Excel goings on and stuff. Cool? Questions about that stuff? Okay, and again, it works the same in numbers, Google Sheets, uh, 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 Excel. Generally speaking, if I had the option to do this in anywhere and it didn't matter, I would do this in Excel because Excel is where all this stuff came from. And other things, Google Sheets and, and, and other folks, they, they sort of have, have run with what Excel's created, but Excel is sort of the mothership in terms of creating this kind of stuff. So things, things are more sophi most sophisticated, most elegant, um, most, most tight in, in the Excel environment. I'd also say they're most tight in the Excel environment running on your local computer. Sometimes you guys use the web base, the Office 365 version of Excel, which is okay. I mean, it can do this basic stuff, it can do this, but it, it, it can also, it's, it's, it's not this, it's quite the same level of functionality as the, as the desktop version. Um, but all versions of the desktop, Mac, PC, Linux, whatever, um, they all, they all um, uh, uh, are, are really robust and really cool. All right, questions about that?